Hi class, and welcome to this video, which is understanding the fieldwork assignment. Most or all of your courses have had fieldwork, and so this video will help you understand how to do this assignment worth a lot of your grade, and also um, asking you to apply some of the important concepts about assessment that we've been learning in class. First of all, everything I'm about to show you is located on the um, in the assignments folder, which is on the course materials page. As you can see, um, the folder for the fieldwork paper is there along with some of your other important assignments. This project is due on December 14th and is worth 20% of your grade. So let's go ahead and enter that folder. If you click on the fieldwork folder, you'll see that there are actual, actually two options for fieldwork. Option one is the traditional observation of a classroom. This is where you go into the class and observe uh, and write about what you see. But because of COVID, the state has extended the, um, the option for allowing video, video observations. And so we'll be talking about that. So you can choose either option. Um, your, the third thing that you see there on the screen is the link to submit the paper. And finally, the link at the bottom is a link to submit your fieldwork form. We no longer have access to TaskStream, so this semester we're being asked to use a Google uh, link, which I've provided you, and you're going to fill out your fieldwork form information there. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So in if you click on the first folder, which is the observation of classroom, you'll see the instructions uh, for that. So this document contains not only the instructions, but the grading rubric. So um, as I said, it's due December 14th, and it's worth 20% of your grade. So let's see how you get started with this option, and then we'll talk about the video option. First, you need to observe a classroom in the school for a minimum of six hours. Now, you might be asking why is it worth 10 hours of field work um, if you're only observing for six hours? And that's because we anticipate four hours of organizing your paper and notes and then writing your paper and submitted it. It's important that your classroom be two things uh, in an area that corresponds to your certification area. So if you're adolescent English, it would be great to do an observation in adolescent English. Don't go into an elementary school, especially because that's a whole different uh, grade level. Um, also, you cannot observe in your own classroom if you're teaching. If you're the teacher of record or you're the teacher's assistant, you cannot observe in your own classroom. And the reason is that it, when you observe, it's important to be completely separate from what's going on in the classroom. It's not possible to observe and be teaching or be assisting a teacher if you do that. So if you're working in a school and you're choosing this option, just ask another teacher if you can observe him or her. Go in on your lunch break a few days and then uh, you'll fulfill that requirement. Um, there is a permission to observe form in the assignments folder. Uh, this is signed by the Dean of the School of Education. It's in case you need verification of the assignment. You don't have to get it signed and return it to me. It just says this is a valid assignment um, and you could give it to a teacher, you could give it to an administrator. So you're going to go into the classroom, and the first thing you're going to do is sit down and take lots of notes on the surroundings. What day, what time did you start, whose classroom, what was the school, where is it located, what type of school is this, what do you see when you sit down in the classroom? Um, do you see posters? Is it a cheerful classroom? Is it a disorganized looking classroom? Is it a messy classroom? When the students are in, you start to talk about, well, how many students are there? If you're observing middle or high school, you might say, um, you know, that I observed over three different periods, that they were 50 minute periods. How many boys and girls were in each class? Uh, any special education students? Some of this can be gleaned from a conversation with the teacher after, which would really flesh out that context. Um, as I've mentioned, 
to in other classes, this is important that this be a separate observation from any that you use for other classes. And that's because the state requires these field works to be separate observations. So don't try to go in and use one field work for three different classes. One thing that you need to know is that we put these through what's called safe assign and it's very good at locating plagiarism whether it's from another student or an internet source uh, and so if that's the case you might receive a zero or you may be asked to rewrite the paper. I've had to do that and I'm always regretful when I have to do it but it's not fair to all the students who put in the work and who do it on their own um, to not take that action. Uh, some people get caught uh, and they don't intend to cheat. So remember, if you are quoting from the textbook or you're quoting from another source, you have to cite it and you have to put it in your references. So you're going to take notes on what you see. You're going to write a four to six page paper. Uh, you're going to describe the context of the observation, which is what I talked about before. Then you're going to briefly describe the lesson that you observed. Now, the mistake that a lot of students make is that they make this the body of the paper. And then Mrs. So-and-so did this, and then she did this, and then she did this, and then she did this. And the reality is that should be a brief, you know, portion of your paper. Where you really want to write the paper is the use of assessment that you saw in the classroom. That's going to be the largest part of your paper. And you're going to answer these questions, uh, and maybe you can think of more. So um, in what ways were your experiences similar to or different from your prior ideas on assessment before diving into the so meaning of this class? So did you see a lot of assessment? Uh, what types did you see? Um, did the teacher use standards? How did they formatively assess the students? Were there any summative assessments? Try not to just go into classes where tests are being given because that doesn't tell you a lot about what, how the teacher understands what the students know, which is what this class is all about. Um, talk to the teacher. Why did, what types of assessments does she use or he use when you're not in the classroom? Maybe you didn't get to observe. How does she know when a student needs help? How often is assessment done? Um, and what kinds of accommodations on assessments are made for diverse learners? Maybe she allows some students to take longer time or to be separated from the class so they're not distracted. Uh, some, some of these are formal accommodations and sometimes teachers do more informal accommodations. So that's the body of your um, paper and that's why I didn't want you to do this too early in the class because you didn't really understand anything about assessment or very little and now hopefully you under you're understanding more. Finally you're going to write a reflection. This is this is not just a conclusion. A conclusion says in summary here's what I did. One, two, three. A reflection says things like in summary here's what I did and here's what I learned from that experience. Here's what I thought assessment was before. Here's what I know it is to be now. This surprised me. This uh, was expected. Here's where I disagree with what the teacher did. Here's where I thought was a good idea. Here's something I could take into my own classroom. Of course, any references in APA format to support your citations that you uh, put in the paper. If you cite something, it should have a reference. And don't put references in that don't have any citations. Sometimes I see a list of references that include, for example, your textbook, and I look back and there's no citation. So only things that you cite need references, but if you do cite it, you need a reference for it. And if this is new to you, I put a writing, um, writing folder on the course site with some really good links about uh, model format APA papers, uh, links about how to do APA. Finally, you're going to submit uh, your field work form. You're going to submit your, your, your paper to Blackboard like we talked about. And you're going to submit your field work form, which asks you to fill out, okay, where did I um, 
observe and some information about that, and the link is in that folder. This assignment may not be turned in late or revised due to when it occurs in the course. So it's quite late. Uh, grades are due shortly after that, and I wouldn't have time to, to double my grading load and get it all done. So make sure you do a good job. Let's talk about the option B, which is to watch the videos. It's a lot like option A, except instead of going to a class, you're watching some videos that I've provided the links for. Six hours of videos. And so um, you can see it tells you what your area of certification is. Uh, you can choose early childhood, select the early childhood videos. They're kind of, everything's kind of organized by grade level. Childhood, you're going to view the childhood videos, adolescent education, adolescent education. I tried to go through and make sure the links all still work because I've used this now for two semesters. If they don't work, um, feel free if you don't come up to six hours to go ahead and watch in another area. It's not a bad idea to see things that go on in other areas. I just don't want the bulk of your videos to be um, outside your area of certification. If you're in um, the dual program or the tri-cert program, uh, you can watch videos from any of those areas of certification. So let's, let's step through. Let's talk a little more specifically about how you do option uh, B. So the first thing you're going to do is look at the outline. I'm about to go over the outline for the paper and the rubric. The rubric is the same, by the way, for both, um, both option A and B. You're going to select the videos that I'll show you there at the end of the instructions and the links. And you're going to take notes on each video. And I've provided a form where you can actually um, take notes. Um, you have to submit that form, by the way, so don't overlook that form. I'll be showing you that form in a minute. You're going to write your paper. Uh, again, a four, four to seven, six or seven page double space paper. Use your notes um, to, to assist you. Submit your paper. Uh, to Blackboard and fill out the fieldwork fo form to the link in the assignments folder. Here's the outline for option B. You're going to, in addition to talking about the con or showing the context on the form, which I'm about to show you, you're going to just pick three favorite videos. These are your favorite videos from all the ones that you selected. And you're going to do an analysis on them. So you're going to talk about the type of formative assessment you saw, the summative assessment, if you saw performance-based assessment. Uh, and for each of these, you're going to talk about why you felt it was, whether you felt it was effective or ineffective. Any other types of assessment. Um, and then consider how the teacher used assessment to inform the instruction. Now, obviously, if you're watching the videos, you don't have access to the teacher the way you do if you go in in person. So I'm going to be looking for a different kind of analysis based on can you what you saw in the video. You're going to write that reflection in much the same way that I described before, a conclusion and your references. Now, we talked about the grading for field work. Uh, is the same, and you can see the rubrics here, um, the context of the observation, whether you could identify standards or learning objectives. Um, that's obviously going to be a little different for um, videos, but what you need to do in the videos for uh, option B is just to see if you can figure out what the teacher is trying to teach. Describe the lesson and spend most of your time on the uh, use of assessment. Your re reflection, your references, your writing mechanics and APA, whether you, you follow the APA rules, whether you have good spelling and grammar. And then there are two other things, the observation form, which can be included separately when you upload your paper to Blackboard, or it can be included as an appendix. I'm going to show you that in a minute, as well as your field work log that you click on the link in the folder and fill out. Now, for this option, you're going to put videos. And that's all you have to put that you did, um, and then some descriptive information about them. 
This is the summary of fieldwork video observations. This is included in the instructions document on the course site. For each video you watch, you're going to put the title, the length of the video, which I've given you, the context. And so what should you put for the context? If you look at the bottom of the tip paper, you're going to put the approximate grade level, the number of students you could see in the classroom, and the organization and appearance of the classroom, and anything else you feel is important. By the way, don't forget to check your certification area above the table. The final column notes is for you to take notes so that you can remember the video. Uh, and if you choose it as one of your three favorites, you don't have to rewatch the video. You'll have your notes right there. At the end, you should total up your hours, and they should equal six hours or more. And that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at nhalbrenner at mercy.edu. Thanks, everybody. Let's get started.